What's up everyone, it's Ashido, and today we're playing Horror Romance, a horror dating simulator. Yeah, don't you add something special if you watched my last one coming up. This is it. So, yeah, it looks like we have uh, our, our cast of, um, you know, friends here. And, yeah. Uh, we have Ghostface, we have Jason, Michael Myers, Freddy, and Chucky. So, uh, th this probably is going to go horribly. Okay. Before we begin, there's something I should tell about myself. Things I should say. What's my name? Ashido. It's my name. My name is Ashido. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Yes. Is this correct? You're darn tootin', that's correct. No, get away from me. Come here, you little whore. <gasps> How many minutes? Okay, we're a minute in. YouTube's not gonna say that's bad. Take it away from me. Oh, ah! Same dream as always. I doubt I'll ever get to sleep without nightmares. Ryan Lister. I blink and scratch my eyelids. I gotta remind myself not to sleep on a moving bus. I got a headache and maybe a concussion from every time my head hits the window while sleeping. I search inside my backpack for my phone. I need to know what time it is and check for notifications. So it turns on the phone to see two notific two friend uh, two messages. The first is from Mr. Torrance. Jack. Ashido, please contact me whenever you arrive to Amityville. <gasps> Everything's set up if you want. I can come for you. Oops. Um. I, don't, I went backwards on next one. I prefer not owing anything to my landlord just yet. Ryan Lister. Thanks for caring, but I'll go to the cafe before heading to the apartment. I gotta sort out all the purchase purchase paperwork. Fly to the next message from the new waitress, Carrie. I'm really grateful for this opportunity. I'll be at the cafe tomorrow by seven o'clock. Haha, <laughs> smiley face. Thanks, Carrie. Please don't worry too much, okay? It's just a waitress gig. We'll work on the cafe later. I spent all night inside a bus, now I gotta get to the cafe, then a new apartment, and then unpack? My body's hurting. I'd kill for Frappuccino right now. Yeah, I would love one too, that'd be nice. The old owner finally retired after signing a never-ending contract to buy a new ca cafe. I've been behind bar for the last two years. Oh my gosh, I'm a felon. And I've gone through many jobs, saving to finally get my own business. And finally, now that I'm the new owner, I feel, you know what? We're happy about this opportunity. Quite accomplished. After all, I've worked these past few years. Having a business will definitely make things better. I stopped distracting and grab my, oh, yeah, distracting, grab my suitcase to go home. I chose to get home after a tiring day. I still can't believe I'm here, so far away from my old home, away from mom, and far away from my stepdad. This remembering makes me have a stomach ache. Sometimes I wonder, killing him was really worth it. <gasps> We're a murderer. Oh my gosh, this alarm. Shit, sun's barely rising. I gotta get up early. Get out of bed questioning my life choices. After a bit, I get up and go to my small kitchen. Open up the fridge. Just a few things I got last night to eat. I've gotta do some actual grocery shopping. Take a few cheese slices and some butter. I'll make a light breakfast to get to work. Quickly eat my food while dressing and rush into the door. Uh, 
but shrinking when I find my land pillar right in front of me. Oops. Okay, this is Jack's voice. <clears throat> Good day. Good day to you. Just wanted to check how my new tenant was doing. Creepy guy. I'm fine. Um, how do you know? I didn't. I just came to check up on you. To, uh, you opened the door before I could knock. Oh, yeah. I understand. Well, to be honest, I'm in a hurry. I've got to get everything set up for the cafe's reopening. The old cafe? You bought it? Well, that's a nice surprise. I'm glad you're an entrepreneur. Does it have a new name? Yeah, it's... What's the name I choose for my cafe? Oh, I can't. It's, that was going to do Ashido's Dreamland. Ashido's. Yes, it's just a classic. It's, uh, it runs in a family. And then I'm going to do... I wonder if I could do this. Um, Fem Boys. Yeah! Yeah, it's Fem Boys. Yeah, I like that one. With a smile. We ought to have the smile there. That's a nice name. Well, maybe I'll pass through and take a coffee later. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. I'm off now, Mr. Torrance. Gosh, I hope he doesn't. This guy gives me the chills. Finally, step into the street before going to the cafe. I have to go to the supermarket and buy a few things I need. As I step away from the apartment building, I start to feel something odd. That feeling of being watched. Nevertheless, when I look to the side in search of a person, I realize there's no one in the street. Maybe my paranoia is back. I quick walk down the street, uneasy. Thanks to the GPS, I get to the supermarket. I take everything I need, milk, almond milk, vanilla, cocoa, etc. and treat myself to a chocolate bar. I get out of the supermarket with my shopping item, realizing that the sun is slowly rising above the horizon. Thanks to being distracted, I didn't notice someone in front of me and bumped into what feels like a brick wall. Oh shit. When I look up, it's a really big guy using a weird and worn out hockey mess. I feel shivers down my spine while seeing him. <laughs> Jason, please, Jason, don't do it. You're, why are you doing it in Amityville? You need to be in Camp Crystal Lake. Jason. Hmm. Doesn't say anything. He doesn't say anything, just stares. After a bit, I realize he's not looking at me, but at the chocolate bar on my hand. Oh, I get it. He wants some. All right, we're going to share it. I lift my bags. I left my bags on the floor. I get up with both of my hands. I break the chocolate bar in two. Here, sharing won't kill me. Mmm. -hmm. The guy tilts his head, looking at the chocolate bar for a few seconds. He accepts it and proceeds to move his head in a pause and gentle manner. I'm surprised when I notice he's mute and quickly realizes that he's saying in sign language. Then I move my hand to answer, you're welcome. One of the many things I learned in prison thanks to the free time. Now, I'm glad I learned it in a way. Finally, I grab my things and leave the big guy behind. I get to the cafe and find someone at the doorstep for her... Appearance, I knew it. She was my new waitress, Carrie. Oh, you must be Ashido. I'm so... I'm sorry, I got here too early. Should I come back later, or... No, Carrie. We're gonna be slammed today. It's our grand reopening, okay? Listen here. Get to work. Don't worry, actually, it's quite convenient. I have to set everything up and clean. Cleaning was going to take a long time. Could you take care of that? Yeah, yeah right away. I don't think I've given everyone a voice. Gary quickly steps inside and opens the door. I told her the cleaning tools were tools where while I went behind the bar setting the groceries up. I grabbed the coffee, put the cream inside the shell, and set up the cups in accessible places. I placed all the pastries and desserts on the shelf next to the counter. When I'm done, 
I was in front of an impeccable cafe. Carrie even placed the tablecloths on each table. Weird. Did we have any of those? Wow, Carrie. What a quick worker. Thank you. I guess we can open up early. It, it, it was nothing. Uh, I'm a good cleaner. I'll change. Uh, thanks, Carrie. Why are you being so weird? Carrie went behind the bar and put on her apron. Meanwhile, I hung up the open sign. I was already put the advertisements in the newspaper alongside a coupon, and I have to have the advantage of the cafe being right in front of a park. I come back to the bar, approaching Carrie. Well, we wait. I wanted to explain to her how to use the espresso machine. Have you ever tried one of these? S sorry, I haven't. I've never had something like that. She almost had a heart attack when I had to s say no. I just nodded. Easy, you don't have to worry about not knowing. It's okay. Not everyone knows about this. Let me explain. I'll carry the basics about coffee, fill the water, put coffee on the uh, port filter, and showed her how to level up the coffee. Then I put the port filter back and finally started the machine. Voila! Just like that. <laughs> Whoa, I thought it'd be harder. Uh, the machine won't be a problem. What will be hard is the server itself. Serving coffee can be easy, but it gets its, it's got its tricks. Now, memorize the menu and the ingredients. Client arrives, so I tell Kira to bring them the coffee once it's done. I get closer to the bar, noticing a dark-haired tall man. His most noteworthy feature being a meat uh, metallic hand. Welcome to Finn Boys Cafe. What can I offer you? Oh, Ash from the, the Evil Dead. Look at that. The old shitholes reopen. And with a hottie serving, too. Last time it looked like he got a stick up his ass. <gasps> Thanks. I hope I don't look that way. The man laughed. I don't know if I should laugh or raise my eyebrow. I didn't get to know him much. I only do coffee. That's all I'm expecting. Well, give me an Americano with whiskey. We don't have that in their menu. Come on, you can't have good coffee while, while whiskey. I ain't a pussy. You don't have a good bottle in there? Give him an alcohol-free Americano. Give him an alcoholic Americano. You know what? We It's our first day. We're serving our customers. Maybe he'll come back. I stare for a few seconds. I, I took... I look at both sides before gesturing for him to wait. He curiously looks at me when I take care of the Americano. When I'm done, I take the cup and go to the storage room. There, I open a box with my stuff. One of my fave, Jack Daniels. Sometimes on rough days, I drink half the bottle and down it in tears until passing out. Now I'm just pouring it in coffee, measuring the quantity so it adds taste without going too far. Walk back to the bar and hand the man his coffee. There you go, a cup of Americano coffee without adding anything because we don't have permission to serve alcohol. Wink, wink. The man looked at me, slightly doubtful before looking at the cup. Finally, takes it and drinks, smiling with satisfaction. Perfect, now I know where to come from my Americano without added Without anything added. Haha. Ha. He laughed quite pleased. I guess I'm still a little weak to whims. Either that or this guy just looked like an uncle who just wanted a drink. Here you go, dollface. Your your pay and your tip. Takes my hand and puts something in it besides the pay, closing it. It's for good luck, trust me. I won't want anything happening to my new favorite barista. This town's weird and quite dangerous, so watch your back. Pats my hand and walks away with a cup of coffee, humming a tune. Oh no, oh what's go I looked at the strange man walking away, my eyes redirected themselves to my still closed hand, doubtful when I opened it to find the freakiest shit I've ever seen in years. 
it was a fucking dry severed finger. I was unable to tell if it was real or fake. I looked at that door without knowing what the hell all that was about. I heard Carrie approaching me, so I hurried putting the finger in my pocket and the money in the register. First client, how was it? I know there's some childless happiness coming from her and couldn't help but smile. An amazing dollar twenty-five. She noticed I was kidding and laughed shyly. Good enough to retire, right? I laughed, realizing the joke's still ongoing, and the exact moment I noticed an abrupt change in Carrie's attitude when the bell chimed once again. Before looking at the door, I looked at Carrie's face. At first, she was surprised to see who had entered, then her face changed into discomfort. Oh no, it's her. It's who? Turned around to look at the door to see what it was while I heard Carrie running away into the storage room. I'd just seen a blonde young girl dressed in fancy braided branded clothing. She got quite the unfriendly face, her nose all wrinkled almost as if she smelled something awful. Nail. <gasps> Ugh. Another stupid town cafe. Uh, beg your pardon? I want a free foam sprint a latte, five decaffeination shots, pumpkin es essence, and no foam, 208 degrees Fahrenheit. I blink, not getting the kid's attitude. I immediately realized this is one of those rich and entitled girls. Great. My favorite kind of people to talk to. It's dangerous to serve coffee that hot. You could get burnt. I'm sorry, are you deaf? I didn't ask for advice. I asked for a coffee. Don't question and do your damn job. Take a deep breath and grip my teeth. Decline her and ask her to leave. Oh, we're, we can't just decline a customer because they're a dick, you know? Do what she asks. So all the anger I have right now, I chose to do the most reasonable thing for the business. Make her the Trenta Latte while I'm at it. I fantasize about throwing it at her face and messing up her makeup or with a bit of luck causing first degree burns. It's what would happen with a coffee at the temperature. Finally, I got the exact order. Here you go. Instead of taking the damn cup, the blonde just stares at it. To take away, she smiled with the malice of the entitled girl. She's teasing me, I know it. But I don't fall for it. I grab the cup and carefully pour the content on one of the paper cups. I slightly burn my finger, but I don't show it. There, anything else? At least now I know she won't be staying. I don't even know her and I already want her gone. She drinks the coffee and small sips. Her lips frown almost like she was disgusted for not finding something to complain about. Mmm. Decent. I'm surprised it's almost perfect. Think she's the closest. Think that's the closest thing she's ever said to a compliment. She extends her perfectly manufactured hands. Oh, manicured hands. Why don't I say manufactured? Manicured hands and tosses twenty dollars on the counter. She walks to the door without waiting for her change or even saying goodbye. But we just got a fat tip. Thanks. Come back soon. God, I hope you never I hope you get run over. I'm so sorry. Chanel scares me to death. I hide in the storage room. I had to hide in the storage room. Uh, don't worry. I can see why. I saw everything. Well, almost everything. You're so brave. She says it's said it with admiration. I shrug it off. Not. Taking note of it when you've been in prison and lived with what I lived, it takes more than a uh, whimsy entitled blondie to scare you. People can only intimidate you if you let them carry. Now come, we've got to organize some stuff back there. We didn't get many more customers, just a few, but at least Carrie and I finally been lazy and most of the storage room is full fully organized now Ugh, i'm a bit tired yeah 
It's been a busy first day. Now we just gotta take the tables back in the closet. I scared to please turn the sign from open to closed. She does. She comes back with with me to arrange the chairs until she remembers she left her bag in the storage room. Going back for it. When I think the first day is over, I hear the door opening and the bell chiming. Someone entered the cafe. That's just my luck. Chucky. I'm so lucky I got here just in time. A hot caramel macchiato with double vanilla. And don't go too small with caramel. I raised my eyebrows, I was looking at him. A short, red-headed boy with scars on his face. This town's full of interesting people. Kind of look like a doll. Or it's just my imagination? He leaned on a counter, is waiting for me to move. He doesn't seem to too embarrassed to arrive at the last second to buy a coffee. Sorry, but we're closed already. Isn't he a bit too small to consume caffeine? Oh, my bad. I didn't see the sign. You're going to serve me anyway, though, right? Client's always right. Throw it. Throw him out. Get him out of here. Now nah, we're going to make him a coffee. We got customers. We need to make a good appearance. Sigh and go to the bar. It's not that I think the client's always right, but after such a hard day, I don't want more trouble. Now I get why the last owner was so bitter. Making the caramel macchiato took less than I thought with the boys. Indications. It looks like he isn't taking his eyes off of me while I'm preparing the drink. He's like... Like he's making sure it's just how he wants it. Place the coffee in front of him on the bar. His mouth changed into a big grin without looking away from me. His huge blue eyes pierced my soul. At least it seems like he likes it. Likes what he sees. Whatever it is he's seeing. Here you go. Redhead takes the glass and sips. A few seconds later he nods pleased. Feel the sugar kicking in already. Ideal for a long night. He laughs in a quite unique manner. Winking at me and handing the exact amount of money. He continues drinking the coffee without moving at all. Like he owns the place and time doesn't matter. Um, well, for him it doesn't, honestly. <clears throat> Excuse me, we're closing, as I was saying. Oh yeah, right. I get your hint. Don't be so grumpy or you'll grow wrinkles. It'd be a shame to ruin such a pretty face. Well, he... Well, he didn't get the paper glass hint. Wait, is this little guy flirting with me? <laughs> I am left speechless for a few seconds, which is... Which he used to turn around and walk to the door without any worries. Found my bag, we can go... Um... Why do you seem so tired all of a sudden? Scratch my eyelids. I probably look like shit, which is exactly how I feel at the moment. Forget it. Let's just go. Walking back home after closing the cafe with Carrie, the girl is really sweet, but I think she lacks courage. She reminds me of myself when I was younger. Maybe on the inside, I'm a bit jealous of her innocence. Although I'm distracted, my sense. My senses are so keen, I can't stop feeling someone looking at me from the back. Ooh, from the back. Is my paranoia back? No, it's my imagination. I'm hearing footsteps. I don't want to go home with someone following me. They'll know where I live, and I can't only get worse from there. Why is everything happening today? I can't stand it. I'm at my goddamn limit. Although my common sense tells me I should run away, I stop walking and look behind me as though there's no one there. But after hearing someone walking behind me, I'm certain I'm not alone. I already heard you, so come out of hiding already. Stop fooling around. There was a certain move. There was a certain movement from inside the shadows. A tall and slender. Silhouette gets closer. I tense up. I really wanted to believe it was just my imagination, but the Slender silhouette. Is it Slendy? Is it Slender Man? No, it's Ghostface. Wow, I didn't expect you to notice my presence. Most never do it. If I don't want to, you know. 
silhouettes get closer to the light between us, which reveals a man in a dark leather jacket, plant, black pants, and a mask covering his face. Ghost face. Gotta admit, this is my first time it happens, but there's always a first time. Technically, you know, just look, uh, you just took my stalking virginity. Uh, I stay quiet. I already had a bad day today with Chanel and the weird doll having an encounter with a uh, mass freak was only making it worse. I don't know what you want, but I'm not in the mood. Please leave me alone. I wish it was that easy. The masked man makes a a theoretical gesture, placing one hand on his chest and the other facing me. But sadly for you, uh, catching me by surprise has caught my attention, so no, I won't leave you alone. My eyes twitch. I'm definitely about to lose my patience, the little sanity I have left, and everything else. Although, I can leave you for the moment in exchange for one simple question. Uh, okay. Sigh with... Uh... While pinching the bridge of my nose, I really want to go back home as soon as poss possible, so I better just play along. Alright, you win. Ask me whatever you want. Great. I'm glad you cooperate. Alright, the question is... What's your favorite horror movie? Just that? The freak just wants to know my favorite horror movie. I, th I think about it before answering, but the answer is easy. Well, we have Saul, or we have none. Like, Let's just say it because it gives us Saul. Let's just say Saul. Saul, the one with jig the Jigsaw doll. I watch it when I'm bored. The masked man starts to laugh like he's been told a joke. What is the what is the what a sadist? All right, you're okay for now. I also like it. He says goodbye, still cackling. The last thing I seen before he turns around is him winking at me. Wait, how do did he wink with a mask? I pretend to forget about it. I just go home before stumbling into another freak along my f Alola with another freak asking what's my favorite Disney movie or some shit I keep on walking trying not to think too much about what just happened I'm so done with today I just want to go home refresh myself sh with a shower and sleep Stop walking when I see a big figure obstructing the apartment building's door. The uneasy feeling returns. Please, no more freaks. Either way, when I realize he's smoking right behind my window, the doubt turns into anger. If I was already having a shit day, this is what was. Trouble. This was truly was going to make me snap. Seems like the man realized my expression changed. He stopped inhaling the smoke. Oh, Michael Myers. Ask him to find another place to smoke. Can you smoke somewhere else? That window, be window behind mine. That window besides mine and it goes into my living room. I don't like the scent of tobacco. To be honest, I wasn't, ki I wasn't kind in the slightest, but... Who could blame me? The last thing I need to go into my apartment is smelling like someone's smoke. He doesn't answer, but he does put the cigarette against the sole of one of his heavy boots. He adjusts his mask. Wait, why does he wear a mask? That was definitely the weirdest counter I've had today. I think we made uh, Michael like mad. My door opens with a click and enters the apartment. Uh, leaning my back on the door to close it, I sigh relaxingly. Finally at home. I'm hungry, but I don't have enough energy to prepare something to eat. I go to the kitchen, grab some cookies I bought, heading to my room and throwing myself on the bed. I feel heavier and the tension leaves my body, relaxing every muscle. What an absurd, stressful day what kind of madmen live around here 
It's like a creep movie. I ate some cookies, fell asleep as soon as I take my pants off in bed. I opened my eyes, looked around, startled. I can't recognize where I am, but it's cold. I hear strange metallic sounds from a place out of view. Oh, no. Oh, I know where we're at. I get up from the ground, scanning my surroundings. I must be dreaming. I start to walk around the place. I can feel the cold, rusty metal under my feet. This feels too real. I start to doubt if it's actually a dream. Freddy, not now. Maybe it's not a dream after all. I can hear a small girl humming in the distance. I can feel shivers down my spine, but I don't feel the fear I should. I search for the voice's origin, but can't seem to find it. Instead, now I'm hearing a deep, raspy laugh. The cackling feels closer. No, no. This is a dream. I know it is. I can't just suddenly appear somewhere so horrifying. I can hear steps getting closer and scraping the metal objective closer. Let's wake up. There we go. I managed to startle myself up. Cold sweat running down my face. I look at the ceiling and let out a deep sigh. A groan leaves my mouth as I pinch the bridge of my nose. We are stressing. Not even a fucking night's sleep. I groan again, shifting positions. Only thing left to do is try to sleep again. But instead my body moves forward and sits up instinctively. I hear a laugh the same as in my dreams. A horrifying man is standing in front of my bed. His scorched face looks at me, grinning. He plays with his gloves with long, sharp blades at the end of each finger, all colliding with each other. You're right. Let's take a nap, shall we? Freddy, please. Oh, shit. The last thing I see is the shiny steel of his gloves drag Dagging forms a perfect arch in the air before piercing my chest. Ending. A horrible nightmare. We got an ending there. What? Chapter 1. We're not going out like that, are we? Is is that the end? Skippity doo da, skippity doo. Thank you for making the game. Chapter 2 coming soon. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna defend ourselves, so we're back here at this one. Get out of my dream. I scream more angular than scared. I turn around to see where the noise is coming from. I manage to see the silhouette in the darkness. It's wearing a hat and gloves with a sharp blade at the end of each finger. It's Stomps on his feet when hearing my voice, but the way his head tilted, he seemed confused. What? The sound of heavy breathing startled my body forward and makes me sit up. It's the neighbor. It was the neighbor. He looked at me with this strange mask like before in front of the building. Looking down, I saw something that made my blood run cold. Had a knife in his hand. Its shiny blade was the last thing I ever saw before being swallowed by darkness. Evil incarnate. So either way, we die there. What? So we gotta make him happy. To continue, okay? Okay, so we're at Michael. We're gonna ask him. Ask who he is. Who are you? The strange... Stranger Justice Mask. He's wearing the cigarette is in his hand still lit and the message is clear he doesn't want to talk rude I should have told him to stick the cigarette up his uh, Michael unexpectedly he finally spoke it remains silent waiting to see if he keeps talking 
But since he doesn't open his mouth, I'm in charge of the carrying the conversation. You live around here? I moved in this morning, so I don't know many people. He takes his sweet time answering, but he does nevertheless. He raises his hand and points up to the thumb of the building that I'm trying to get in. I live right here. Okay. Lori! Michael, I've been looking for you. Dirty blonde haired girl opens the door and grabs him by the arm. It makes me realize how muscular this guy is. The girl looks up at me surprised. Oh, sorry, did my brother scare you? Well, at least there's one normal person in the family. Don't worry, we're chatting. Michael spoke to you? That's new. Don't want to cause a bad impression saying otherwise, so I just nod in response. May have stood out to him. You're new, right? We don't really get many neighbors around here. Name's Lori, by the way. That's right, I got here this morning. My name's Ashido. It's a pleasure. Likewise, you're sweet, but we're in a bit of a hurry. I'll see you later around here. Don't hesitate to ask if you're out of salt. Her tone lets me know she's just joking in a friendly way, so I laugh and wave them goodbye. I choose to ignore the fact that Lori practically had to drag Michael upstairs once we got inside. I won't ask why he's got a janitor suit on or a mask. I'll just pretend it's totally normal. Door opens to click, I enter my apartment, back relaxing. Okay, now we've got to survive Freddy. Okay, we're going to sleep. Open my eyes. Oh, shoot. We're getting a good ending here. Defend myself. Get out of my dream. Dream, we've already read this one last. Stop something. Wait. Something is confused. What? Yes. Managed to startle myself up. Cold sweat running down my face, looking at the ceiling. Groan, leaves my mouth as I pinch the bridge of my nose. The day can't get any weirder. Try to sleep again. Shifting positions. So he didn't pop out this time to, to get me. So. I was so close to finishing it normal the first time. Like, I'm sure we can go back and, um, we can see what ending it is if, you know, Ghostface kills us. Obviously, if Jason kills us. We already seen these two kill us. But, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it on that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it on that. That was the horror romance, a horror dating simulator. Uh, if you want to see me play this uh, some more, get every ending. It's only chapter one. I'm not sure if there's gonna be any more chapters to it, but let me know. Leave me some likes, comments, and I will read them, reply to them. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me. It's Ashido. Peace out. Bye bye.